So what I'm going to do first up is, is give an update on where we are in terms of the, the monitoring and surveillance in respect to, to UG99. First, start off why we're all here. Wheat. Wheat. It's, it's such an important crop. The world's worst, most widely grown crop. 200 plus million hectares, 600 plus million tons production a year. And for consumption, you look at the Siwana region, countries there, wheat's contributing more than 30% of the daily calorie intake. It's, it's, it's just so, so important. So obviously any, any threat to, to such an important crop, it's, it's, it's of huge, huge importance. UG99, just, just to refresh you on the story, I mean, you know this already, 98 in Williams Wagori's nursery, Uganda, very heavy stem rust infections, strange results. 1999, confirmation and identification of UG99, loss of key resistance genes like SR31, SR38, and a whole suite of, of other stem rust resistance genes genes. 2005, Dr. Borlaug convened an expert panel putting out the report sounding the alarm on, on global stem rust and the subsequent formation of the, the Global Rust Initiative and which then became the, the Borlaug Global Rust Initiative. 2005, when this, this issue came, came to the world stage, the, the questions were then asked, well, well, what do we know in terms of susceptibility? Where might the pathogen move next? How quickly might it, might it move? And it became very apparent, and it was a, a key recommendation from, from the expert panel, that we, we, we need effective monitoring and surveillance systems in, in place. In terms of what we're seeing, I mean, we've seen an encouraging trend in, in this all beginning to, to come together, in terms of the expansion of, of the surveillance network, you see the red bars there, the number of countries that are contributing information to the system. A couple of countries in 2007, we were now up to last year 20 countries, and the target would be to, to push that forward further, hopefully to, to get it up to something like 30 countries in, in the next couple of, of, of years. You see from the, the, the maps on the, on the bottom, the sort of geographical coverage that we're getting, and we're now beginning to get much, much better knowledge in terms of disease incidence severity um, on the ground across a very, very wide, wide area. Also importantly, we're, we're beginning to get multi-year data from very standardized surveys, so that's giving the opportunity to pick up potential changes that are, that are happening out there in, in the field. As an overview in terms of timelines um, and movements for, for or detections of, of UG99 or the variants, you can see there's, there's been the spread both in a, in a northerly direction but also more recently now uh, southerly direction as, as, as well. So moved as far as Iran, first confirmation there in 2007 and subsequent confirmation 2009 and also 2010, re repeat confirmation of, of UG99 presence. Down in South Africa, 2009, we saw the appearance of, of SR24 variants um, in, in, in South Africa. The dotted arrows that you're seeing there, that's, that's some indication from, from, from wind movements in terms of, of possibilities for, for future movements. So certainly dis disease establishment in Iran, you see the potential movement into Central Asia uh, towards South Asia. Southern Africa, if you look at the, the historical literature, evidence there of, of very rare events um, across to, to Australia um, and also possibilities move, moving across to, to South America as, as, as well. <coughs> 